This message was made possible by grants from the following contributors. The Donald W. Fisher Foundation and Cinema South. Where do you want the camera? I think it should be here. No, I want to get it on the ground over there. Aren't we going to cross the line? Okay, well, if the camera goes there, yes. But, you know, I don't care. I'll, uh, I, I can fix it in post. All right, places, people. Roll camera and camera speeds and action. Take a 1200 with a Shamira, please. Can I just have him for a moment here? Yeah, but we gotta go. Got a hard four. Sound. Sound is good. Everybody? Good. I'm good. Stand by. And action. Looks like an exciting way to make a living, doesn't it? But looks can be deceiving. We're here today to warn adults and young people alike about a madness that's stalking the country. It's the disease of independent filmmaking. It seems these days everyone wants to make a feature film. They think it'd be cool. Or as young people like to say, the bomb. The bomb, indeed. Little do they realize that this seemingly harmless activity can lead to a lifetime of heartbreak and ruin. People lying to their families to finance their film addictions. Going into massive amounts of debt on their credit cards even crashing their own automobiles for the insurance proceeds. Reduced to any methods conceivable to finance these so-called works of art. And it can happen to you. So be on the lookout for people that are hooked or might be trying to get you hooked. Ooh, what is that? My grandfather bought this uh, back when he was stationed here, back in the 60s. I think it still works. Hey, I bet I can find some film stock. You want to make a short film? A short film, indeed. There's no such thing as a short film. Just a short budget. A short film will consume a long part of your life and make short work of your pocketbook. Soon you'll be calling film labs asking for their short ends. While all the while telling loved ones you've been losing money gambling. Honey! I just received a phone call from a collection agency regarding a film lab and a Telecini bill. What the hell is Telecini? Another sign is the delusional belief that you can make a feature film for $7,000. Did you hear about the film that Kaganoff shot on his cell phone camera? Yeah, the guy sold his blood for a year to fund the post-production, and it's made $100 million. No, we could do that. So the next time you hear someone say they heard about a feature film that was made for less than a used car and made $20 million, run away. This person's delusional. Whatever you do, do not engage this person in conversation. Their line of reasoning can be very persuasive. In a matter of minutes, you could be enticed into a way of life that brings untold suffering to thousands, just like you. Something that maybe started on the weekends or because everybody's doing it, leads to being hooked on filmmaking. Some of the warning signs are as follows. A sudden proliferation of books pertaining to filmmaking, attending art films and actually enjoying them, and excessive use of a camcorder. Or statements such as this. You know, Orson Welles and I are the same age when he made Citizen Kane. I really feel like this is going to be my year. And it only gets worse. Eventually, the disease steadily eats away at the independent filmmaker until they hit rock bottom.
I just love puppies. You know, they don't allow us to have puppies in here, and they're so lovable. Well, Mrs. Johnson, that's exactly what my film is about. It's about puppies and, and, and finding homes for orphan puppies. Oh, we're going to have to find homes for the puppies. Well, you're going to do exactly that. We're going to find homes for all those puppies. If I could just get you to sign uh, right here and right here and right here and initial right here. We could start finding homes for all those orphan puppies today. Thank you. Thank you. Not a pretty sight. Okay. Now that you've discerned that a loved one is a full-blown film addict, what do you do? The best approach is tough love. That's right. You're going to have to do an intervention. Oh, sure, they'll act at first like they don't know what you're talking about, but that's to be expected. They are in denial. I, I said I'll pay everybody back, okay? It's not the money. You're not in control anymore. I can handle it. Like I said, I'll just, I'll pay this off as soon as I can. Well, as soon as I can make my deal at Sundance. Their protests of innocence are a desperate call for help. So you must remain firm and realize that your loved one may suffer from indie fever for the rest of their lives. And there will be relapses, so you must remain vigilant. And whatever you do, do not let them get near a camera. There may be support groups in your area for people suffering from this disease. If that's not successful, seek the help of a professional. With time and counseling, these people may return to becoming productive members of society. Okay, here are your menus. Um, I'll be back in just a minute to take your drink order and to uh, tell you about tonight's specials. Therefore, no stigma should be attached to people suffering from this insidious disease. But it does make one pause to think about the cost of indie fever. People who could have made a difference to mankind, becoming scientists, doctors, teachers... Instead, throwing away the best years of their lives, pursuing a foolish addiction. We must never forget that indie fever can strike anyone, anywhere, at any time. With time, and hopefully one day with research, there may be a cure. But for now, prevention and early intervention are the only hope. If we can save just one person from the agony and misery caused by independent filmmaking... It'll be worth it. Remember, friends don't let friends make independent films. If you or someone you know suffers from indie fever, please contact www.indiefever.org.